As the U.S. military today continued its limited mission against ISIS in northern Iraq with three U.S. airstrikes near the Mosul Dam, U.S. officials appeared to shift their tone, suggesting possible expansion of the mission and increased international involvement. We will be relentless against ISIL, um, and we will do what's necessary to protect Americans and see that justice is done uh, for what we saw with the barbaric killing uh, of uh, Jim Foley. Um, so we're actively considering what's going to be necessary uh, to deal with that threat, uh, and we're not going to be restricted uh, by borders. We need to have a regional approach here, and, and, and an agency and an international approach uh, about this threat posed by this particular extremist group, ISIL. The long-term strategy is going to have to involve people on the ground taking the fight to ISIL, uh, and that is Iraqi and Kurdish uh, forces, that is uh, Syrians uh, who we are supporting on the ground. During the White House briefing today, this was Ben Rhodes' response to the question as to whether the killing of photojournalist Jim Foley represented a terrorist attack against the United States. Absolutely, uh, when you see somebody um, killed in such a horrific way, that represents a terrorist attack. That represents a terrorist attack um, against our country and against an American citizen. Back in Iraq, sectarian divisions tore through the central part of the country when a Shiite militia attacked a Sunni mosque in central Iraq early this morning, killing at least 60 people. The attack appeared to be retaliation for the explosion of three roadside bombs aimed at killing a Shiite leader. It happened as ISIS fighters surrounded a nearby Shiite town, home to another Iraqi minority group. And in northern Iraq, roughly 70 miles north of Baghdad, Iraqi forces and the Kurdish Peshmerga continued their fight against ISIS, attempting to recapture two towns controlled by ISIS. This fighting came just hours after Germany and Italy joined France and Britain in saying they would arm Kurdish forces in Iraq. Since August 8th, the U.S. has carried out a total of 93 airstrikes in Iraq. Following a massive relief effort this week, the United Nations called Iraq the most rapidly intensifying humanitarian disaster in recent memory. Joining me now is the host of MSNBC's Hardball, Chris Matthews. Chris, thanks for taking time out of what is a very busy day to talk about this. Given the, the words coming out of the White House and the Department of, the, of Defense, do you, do you think the mission in Iraq is still as limited as the pre president originally said it would be? Well, it can't be if the Secretary of State's tweet means anything. He said we're going to crush ISIS. Well, that doesn't sound limited to me. Crush do you, it? Do you, do you think that the president needs to go back to Congress? Well, I think, uh, here's what, I don't, this whole thing about whether you get approval of Congress has gotten murky. I think he would get it rather quickly, and he'd get a lot of Republican votes for it. I think, I think this became a blood war when they did what they did to uh, Jim Foley, James Foley. And, and that was an attack on an American for being an American. This isn't a battle between the Sunni and the Shia anymore over territory over there. Uh, because of W, we broke that country apart. I, don't, I still don't believe that President Obama has bought that country, to use, to use the Pottery House rule. Uh, I don't think we've bought it. I don't think we're responsible for the success of Iraq uh, just because W blew it apart. But I do think there's a blood feud aspect to this thing now. You go after an American like that, you cut his throat in public right in our face. What are you supposed to do when that happens to your country? You have got to react to that. You've got to go back at them. Well, and so I think that's the mood now. I don't think it's about rebuilding Iraq. I think it's about getting even with ISIS, well, hurting then, them really bad. And I think that's the feeling most Americans have, which is we don't care about the Sunni and the Shia or whether the, the, the Kurds are separate from the Sunnis and the Shia or whether the Arabs and the Kurds separate and all that stuff. That's their world. It's not our world. It becomes our world when you get one of our guys and do what they did to him. I think it's different now. I think it's more of Obama's war against ISIS, not necessarily for the reunification or the success of Iraq as a country. That's probably in the past anyway. I don't think there's going to be an Iraq, do you? I see no evidence of an Iraq right now. I see the Kurds doing their thing, the Shia taking over more and more uh, fights as they did today, killing all those people, their militia, those Sunni people today at that mosque and at the hospital, going in to kill them if they're still alive. That's a blood feud between Sunni and Shia. I think our feud or our war right now is with ISIS. Well, and to that end, I mean, the fact that Ben Rhodes answered so unequivocally, yes, the killing of Jim Foley was a terrorist well, why is attack. That a, why is that a question of any significance? I don't get it. Answer that. 
Well, well because that's why the it's president, not an important question. Well, because at, the, at this point, the president, I mean, to answer your question, I think the president has said time and time again, we will protect American interests when America is threatened. And now you have an American citizen who's been killed. There are other Americans, presumably within ISIS's yeah. grasp. Um, of course. And, and there and is a terrorism. And, and based the killing on, by Sirhan Sirhan of Bobby Kennedy was a terrorist act. Okay, we've had a lot of terrorism over the years. That's terrorism, of course, but it's also a war. I mean, this, ISIS has basically declared war on us, I think. I think that's what that was about. They Look, want us to fight with them, and I think they're going to get a fight. Do you think, um, do you think if, if it is President Obama against ISIS, do you think he has a support? I mean, you think he has a support of the American public on this? Because I think he can do any damage a, he wants to ISIS point. right now, and we would applaud it. Any damage. To ISIS right now. These are killers. They've gone into the field to kill. They're not people going up to join the Peace Corps or the Foreign Legion because they lost their girlfriend. These guys are going out there to kill. That's why they joined this organization. They are a murderous group of people drawn together by murder. They want to kill people. Look what they do to the Christian community, Yazidis. Look what they're doing to even some Sunnis they get across, come across, they kill them. And, and they're this forced conversion, well, that's an oxymoron. They're just killing people. And so I, I think they're a bad lot. And I wish there was a way to basically destroy them quickly, but there isn't because they're all mixed in with the community there. So I don't know whether airstrikes are going to do much right. to them. And that's the issue, Chris, I think, is, you know, Ben Rhodes even said today, Martin Dempsey and Chuck Hagel yesterday said ground troops are going to be needed. And the yeah, idea is for them to not be American ground troops. But to your earlier point, there is a lot of sectarian violence. Can we be, do we have reliable partners on the ground? Can we no. get an international quorum together? To what degree well, do you think the the Europe will, will feel like they have a vested interest the here? The only way people tell me historically you can get rid of these uh, these forces these radical forces within the Arab world the Islamic world is to have the Islamic world basically uh, push them out you know like body uh, you know tissue rejection reject them they have to take them on so we have the armies of Egypt the army of Jordan all the other armies in the region uh, why aren't they all getting together I know that George senior George Bush senior who was a lot smarter than his son in this issue of the, of the Middle East I mean, he put together an incredible coalition of the Arab League and all the others. They had the, the Japanese and the Germans pay for that first Gulf War. I don't see that effort going on right now. I wish the president, by the way, was down working on this, but putting together the coalition, not of the joke government in Baghdad, but of the people who want to get rid of ISIS. That's a, that's a war that I think a lot of people would like to fight, because if we, we can't get rid of them, the Arabs are going to have to get rid of ISIS. It seems to me, don't they have to do it themselves? We can't stay there forever, do and we could kill a half of them. The half will remain. will be as much trouble in the future. It's like Vietnam. If you're not going to stay, you can't call the shots. The people who stay call the shots. The Arabs, uh, the Egyptians, the Jordanians, they're all in the region. Certainly even Assad wants to get rid of ISIS, although we don't like him, I guess. Uh, we, we are on the same side when it comes to ISIS. MSNBC's Chris Matthews. Chris, thank you as always for taking the thank time you, to Alex. hang with me. Thank you, dear. And be sure, of course, to catch Chris tonight on Hardball at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, joining me now is founder of Women for Women International, Zainab Salbi. Zainab, thanks for joining me. If we talk about Iraq and the future for the country politically, I wonder how much confidence you have in Haider al-Abadi and his ability to create some kind of lasting peace or at least pull the country together from, from the, the conflict that it is mired in today. Well, the takeover of ISIS in, in one-third of Iraq, actually, and what they've done to the Muslim, Christian, and Yazidi communities have become a way, have actually made a wake-up call for a lot of Iraqis, Sunni Shias and Christians, and particularly Sunni and Shias. And so that wake-up call has led to the change, has is, is triggering a new discussion of what does it mean to be Iraqis, not based on our ethnicities, but based our, our, on our unity as a country. And so whether al can do that or not, I don't know. I do know that there is a wake-up call. I know that the right discussions has been triggered in the last month and so. I know that there's some right directions. Whether El Abadi is the guy or not, it's yet to be known, to be honest. Uh, let me talk to you about ISIS. Uh, do you think an international mission, uh, coalition, perhaps involving Western European partners and regional actors, is the way to defeat ISIS? Or do you think, as Chris Matthews just said, that it needs to come from inside the Arab world specifically? 
ultimately the it, it needs to come from inside the Arab world this is a, ISIS is a manifestation of a major crisis that we're having in the larger Middle East uh, ISIS actually is also a manifestation that started with with the Syrian war yeah. and so this is ultimately an identity crisis it's a dark era for the Middle East right now and particularly for the Muslim world and ultimately the solution has to come indeed from within now having said that if America and the international community is going to intervene which is which is one thing it's okay it's welcomed however it has to be strategic and long-term vision it cannot keep on doing what the Obama administration has demonstrated in the last few years keeps on just putting up fire here and there but not addressing the root causes of the issues ISIS came as a result of support by some of Americans allies in the region ISIS came from Syria which America did not intervene and watch one of the worst humanitarian crises in the 21st century it's still going on and we're still not doing anything so we can't continue just reacting to the last crisis as opposed to understanding what is the root causes of this what our allies in Saudi Arabia or in Qatar or even in Egypt are doing they are part of this issue in here and and thus and our alliance with them and our relationship with them is part of the solution as well let me ask you the fact that a British uh, citizen may have been behind the beheading of Jim Foley and the and the you know we talk about this being a, a dark period for the Middle East. It is a dark period for any country where there are terrorists joining the jihadist mission of ISIS. Uh, to what what I mean? What is the correct response from the British government in a moment like this? I mean, the direct response from the British government, it has to have actually citizens accountable. And its citizens has to, in this case, be defined by all definitions of citizens, including if they were of ethnic minority or of uh, different religions. So it has to be fully accountable for its citizens. And the citizens rather need to be going to court and trial and had to be rigid and all of these things to make sure that there's transportation of these young men from England or all over Europe or all over the world into Iraq and Syria is not allowed. And so this is an international crisis. If if ISIS continue to to thrive and continue to do what it's doing, and I have to go back again, this is not did not come out of the blue. This has been going on for the last few years. We're just seeing the result of it right now. Now, if we are to stop it, we've got to actually address all of the components of it, and we've got to understand if Iraq falls apart in here, if Syria falls apart in here, the crisis is going to be even much bigger and much wider. So it's in essence, it's in the interest of United States of America. America and the international community it, to actually stabilize the Middle East and in and, and whatever that stabilization means both in a humanitarian uh, relief for the refugee and crisis that is happening both in Syria and Iraq both in military intervention to help uh, stop ISIS uh, from growing and and to stop them completely actually and both in supporting the government and holding them accountable in the Middle East for supporting and financing some ISIS members or having their youth going and joining ISIS members so now I think the White House is slowly Slowly coming around to that line of thinking exactly perhaps too slowly but slowly nonetheless I hope so women for women international women uh, for women so. international Zainab Salbi thank you so much for your time A pleasure thank after you. the break 13 days after the death of Michael Brown Ferguson police release the incident report and it tells us nothing the ACLU's Vanita Gupta and former federal prosecutor Paul Butler join me coming up next on now